Whoa, super cool. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to 2018. If you're watching this later on in the year, no problem. If it's the start of the year for you, we're gonna jump into some tech trends that we're predicting for the year 2018 in real estate. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Michael Montgomery. I'm the broker with Renzo Real Estate in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And let's jump right into a few of the tech trends that we predict either to continue to grow or to rise in 2018. First, artificial intelligence, AI and machine learning. Oftentimes when we hear this, we think of robots, we think of Terminator, we think of something that's from a different planet, some machine coming in and taking over the world. And that's not the case at all with AI. AI has been around for a long, long time. And the machine learning aspect is you're bringing in data and from that data, you have predictive intelligence. Siri uses this, Netflix, Spotify, all sorts of different apps that you probably engage with on a daily basis. Now, how is that going to impact real estate? One of the big currencies moving forward is data. And a lot of times people talk about data almost as a currency form now. And the amount of data that you have on something, the higher currency you have. So you require data in order to use predictive intelligence. Now, the thing about real estate is there's a lot of data out there, whether it's market data, sold data, whatever that looks like. And from there, you can use predictive intelligence. Some real estate websites already do use it. So that's on the side of I'm looking at this home and now this the artificial intelligence or machine learning is predicting that I'm going to like this home. Really cool concept. It's already out there. I think we're just going to see a rise and more use of this and it's going to become more accurate because the more it's used, the more this technology is used, the better it becomes. One thing that we saw in 2017 was the rise of chatbots, which are in a lot of ways artificial intelligence. And sometimes we build them out for if and then statements. But I think we're gonna to continue to see a rise of these chatbots. They are, they're tools, a lot of times they're put into social media and they're great for people that have these incoming leads and they need to respond right away. People need to be responded to right away. We have a demand for that in our society. So chatbots can be a great, great tool. And they're using artificial intelligence. So basically you're setting up the chatbot for when the lead comes in. Are you interested in this home? Yes or no. And then from there, they're moving down the funnel, but they're not actually interacting with a person. Therein lies one of the criticisms with chatbots and then some of the artificial intelligence related to real estate too, is because we are in an industry that is people focused, we're sitting down with people, it's still a belly to belly business in so many ways. Of course, there's tools out there to help us, but we're still in a people based business. So one of the concerns is, do we wanna take out the personal element of real estate? I would say no. I think sales will still be a people to people based business, but your role is changing. If there's sales data released, if there's predictive intelligence on which home somebody's going to choose, your role as a real estate agent changes. That's another reason why we have to really watch AI because it can nudge out the agent. It can nudge out the agent, but it's still gonna be one of those situations where I think the cream's gonna to rise to the top. If all you're doing is harboring data, well, machines can harbor data and analyze it in a quicker and oftentimes more accurate means than a human. So it's an interesting technology to watch. I think we're gonna see more of a rise in it in the home buying process, but then also on say like chatbots and leads and how we interact with our clients. Next, what I started with here, this guy, virtual reality headset. So virtual reality and augmented reality. We are a little bit biased because we believe strongly in this technology and we see the value to buyers and sellers for that matter. But I think we're gonna to continue to see a rise of it. We see brokerages now coming out with virtual reality rooms where buyers come in and they actually interact with the properties right in there. So if you haven't heard of virtual reality, most real estate agents have. In this case, you put on a headset and you can actually walk through the home. I think we're gonna see more of a rise in it just given the low cost options that we can use in order to capture properties in virtual reality. One being Matterport, very cost effective. It acts as a 3D tour so people can walk through the home and it also works with virtual reality so you can actually experience the home. The criticism on virtual reality is that, again, does it nudge out the agent? Does the agent no longer have use if somebody's going through the home on their own from their couch with a virtual reality headset? Our argument is no, because your value as a real estate agent doesn't just consist of opening a door and letting somebody through the door. There's so much more involved with analyzing 
where the value of the property is. You've been through other properties in the neighborhood. So I don't believe it nudges out the real estate agent. Instead, if you're going out to show 20 properties, you may be able to cut that down to let's say five and you have a very narrowed in idea of the market value of each of those when you're going through and you've done thorough research. Tough to research 20 properties when you're going out with a buyer, buyer opens the door, says, eh, didn't realize that wall was there, see you later. So again, as, as we start to see this technology develop, one of, the, one of the issues was just, do enough people have headsets? Headsets are becoming very inexpensive and the technology is getting quite strong. So the cameras that they're shooting 3D VR in is getting quite strong. So we're going in that direction. The next side of the coin is AR, augmented reality. Very similar in a lot of lights, but you're actually, instead of actually walking through and seeing, you're interacting with your environment. A perfect example of this would be when the Pokemon Go craze. So those little Pokemons weren't actually there, of course, but you're still interacting with the Pokemons and the Pokemon Go. So the same idea works with augmented reality. In the augmented reality, you may be walking into a room and placing your couch there. So oftentimes we walk into a vacant property and we're like, hmm, is that couch gonna fit there? Is that chair gonna look good there? And that is what, uh, that's one of the powers behind augmented reality, is we'll be able to interact with that environment. Moving right along, cryptocurrency. So I don't think you could talk about tech in 2018 without chatting about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. This is around every corner that you turn, you read some article about blockchain, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, basically an unregulated currency form. There's a ton of them out there. The most well-known one is Bitcoin and it's unregulated as in people can jump into it and it's not, there's no federal regulations around this type of currency. It operates in so many ways like a stock. There's a, there's a limited number. So as more of them are purchased, the value of these other ones go up. If they're sold, the value can potentially go down. But the technology being used is called blockchain. It's a complex technology, but it's very secure because you're saved throughout all these different sources. And it becomes very hard to hack into it, if at all possible, and it becomes very hard to break it down. So let's say you have a server in your office. That server goes, your information goes. Blockchain's not the same, and it's a complex, and we're gonna start seeing more of blockchain come out in different areas, not only in currency. So when you think of cryptocurrency, people ask the obvious question, well, are we going to be buying homes with Bitcoin? I don't think we're gonna see a lot of that in 2018, but we're gonna see more talk around it. There was a sale that occurred in Texas, I believe in 2017 with Bitcoin, and we are seeing some agents post their price in cryptocurrency forms, as well as in US dollars or Canadian dollars. So it's an interesting thing to watch. I think you're gonna have buyers asking you, and it's a great, it's a great topic of conversation when you're out and about and you're thinking about is this home ever going to trade for bitcoin or for a cryptocurrency i would watch i would watch this and i would listen to it and i would see where it's going in other industries because before people are going to come in and feel comfortable buying a five hundred thousand dollar house with cryptocurrency i think we're going to start to see smaller transactions occur even though they're harder to do with bitcoin i don't think the technology is going to stop and I also believe that we're gonna see more blockchain technology used in other ways in order to store data. So a little bit complex, but really, really cool to watch and it does play right into our business. Next, something a little bit more easy to grasp are smart homes. Smart homes, the Nest thermostat, the Philips Hue light, the Ring doorbell, these things have been around for a long, long time. Well, not all of them, but more and more things are coming out and they're actually using artificial intelligence they're using automation to make your life easier in a home smart locks like i said the ring doorbell the smart thermostats and now we're seeing google home alexa so people in their homes are beginning to interact with this technology the lights all sorts of things so i think we're going to see more of a rise and i think we're in most cases you'll see a pretty decent roi on some of these investments if people are making into automating their home because as more buyers come into the market maybe they're of a millennial generation or maybe there's just more understanding of technology we are going to see people looking at that as a benefit to the home and there are they can be very inexpensive but i think adding a smart element to the home is a trend that we are going to see in 2018 as these voice recognition tools become stronger 
and more useful, which I believe they, they are doing at, in 2017 and then 2018, it should even be stronger, people will be interacting with their homes in a different way. They will be interacting with their homes in a different way and us as real estate agents, we should have an understanding of that. On that same side of the coin, we are going to likely see more and more automation in our businesses. So there is automation out there right now. We have these funnels that we bring people through. We have CRMs that automatically respond and automatically send out a text message if a lead was to come in and ask a criteria. I think we're gonna to start to see more of that. Reason being is we are needing to see things on an on-demand basis. Buyers are putting in their information and a lot of teams require you to respond within one minute, less than one minute. And that, that shows the, the level of automation that I believe is required. Because if you need to respond within one minute, then there needs to be some level of automation to move this person through the pipeline because their demand is so high. If they're giving you 60 seconds to respond, you better have some level of automation with your business in order to move them through. The other beauty of automation is you can handle a larger number of leads and clients. So chatbots are another part of this, but you have leads coming in without an automated business, you're one person or you're one team. You can't, you can't touch all those people. So using automation in your business, I think we're gonna see more businesses come out, more startups come out that are really trying to simplify the automation process for real estate agents. I think a lot of times us real estate agents, we don't really wanna focus on how can we build out the perfect sales funnel and let's code it and let's build it from scratch. No, 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 we're not interested in that. We're interested in something that works and following the system and paying for that. So I think we're gonna see some startups come out with that. So that's the automation side. That plays into some of the other categories as well. Now, moving on to more general trends that we'll likely see in 2018 on the tech side, but also more just on the general real estate side. I think we're gonna to start to see more MLS consolidation. That's been happening for years. There's been lots of talk around that. So the MLS system consolidation between areas, whether you're in say California or you're in Alberta, you're gonna to start to see that consolidation occur. We are going to very likely see more release of sales data to the consumer. As we saw in GTA, so in the Toronto region, in Toronto, Ontario, they released the sold data. This was a long back and forth I fight slash disagreement slash how are we going to work with this? And they have decided to release this whole data. So as soon as one happens like that, then there's very likely going to be more that come up. So I think that's going to be something to watch. And that also plays into the fact that as a real estate agent, how are you going to go about differentiating yourself? So if you have sold data out there, if you're just harboring the sold data, you're not doing enough. If you are just opening the door, you are not doing enough. So I'd recommend looking at your business in a different light and say, how can I differentiate? These technology tools are great. You can use the technology tools, but if all you're doing is holding data or opening a door or doing something that literally a computer could do, you're not, you're not analyzing, you're not meeting people, you're not having these conversations, these things that computers can't do, then I think you're setting yourself up for failure. So it's going to be an exciting year. There's gonna be a lot coming out with technology. It's going to continue at such a rapid pace as we've seen over the past few years, and it's going to make our life easier. There's going to be some technologies that are coming out that are gonna nudge that realtor out. So make sure that you do have that differentiating factor and always just stay up to date with what's happening as we move forward this year. It's gonna be a very exciting year. So thank you very much for watching this. Wishing you the best in 2018 or whenever you are watching it and we look forward to chatting with you soon. Thanks very much.